Hi, and welcome to this VDMX tutorial on the new video tracking plugin. To get started, I'm going to open up this project and I'm going to include in the tutorial video so you can get a look at video tracking with an ISF shader. So before things get too confusing, let me go over to my FaceTime camera and there it is. You can actually see that this window is tracking my face. Really cool. So if I click on plugins and video tracking, this new tracking plugin has a number of options. For example, we have human tracking, which switches over to more of a torso, which I'll show you in a little bit. Face tracking, which you are currently seeing now. And then there's also hand tracking, which we have activated. It does a pretty good job. And then there's the human mask and attention saliency and object saliency. I'll, sh I'll show you what those look like a little bit later. For the time being, I would highly recommend that you do not enable all of these as they are very computationally intensive on your computer. Once you create a video tracking plugin, you'll see that you get a little pop-up box. I'm gonna look at the one that we already have open, which is right here. Right now I have it set so that it is selecting the video source from layer one pre-FX. Uh, we can also do straight from the camera, but I'm gonna show you why I'm gonna use layer one in a second. Uh, there's a few options. At one, it's telling you it's running. That's great. There's the human detect, which will allow you to change like next, previous, random, and face detect. Here, we'll try this. We'll use this photo. So if I click on it, you'll notice that I can select in the preview different faces, or I can use this button, right click. Uh, let's do a key detect spacebar. So now when I hit spacebar, it's shifting between these faces. So if you're curious, Yes, you can use another camera. Yeah, pretty cool. Uh, it's tracking. Uh, let's take a look at the hands just so you can see what I see. It does a great job. And yeah, if you're interested in more hand tracking, you can also get yourself a Leap Motion, uh, which has been around for some time. I think they call them Ultra Leaps now. Let's jump back. So with video tracking enabled, I'm going to disable uh, hand detect because I don't need it just a second. And I'm going to enable human tracking to show you what that looks like. So right now it's tracking more of my body. If I go to that other camera angle, which is on an iPad, you'll see that it's doing a pretty good job of tracking me here. If I go back to that group photo, you can see how it's tracking these individuals as the camera moves a little bit closer. And we can do a full torso. All right, to jump back to this. Yeah, so we're gonna disable some of these other options and enable human mask, attention saliency, and object saliency so I can show you what they look like. And in the preview, I'm gonna select attention mask. This is just me moving around, human mask. Next, this is more what you see in the remove background effect with some image quality options, including accurate, balanced, or fast. Uh, and then we have our object saliency, which is based on computer vision. All right, to jump back to this, I'm gonna go back to my FaceTime camera I'm going to disable the human tracking, switch back over to face detect. And I'm just going to show you this little ISF example that I created. Let's go here. Let's go on pupil size, video tracking, face detect. We're going to choose the width of my face. Okay. So basically what I did is I took this ISF shader which has a number of values and it's going to be included in this tutorial. I right clicked, I chose video tracking, face, center. So it's choosing the center of my face. I then took these values and if you click on like a button UI inspector, you can actually see that I believe it is the X value. Yeah, it's right there. I inverted that so that when I'm moving around, it looks to me like the eyeballs are looking at me. Um, so you can play around with inverting values to have a different effect. As for the pupil size, that's what we chose. That was the width of this box. So whenever we get closer, the pupils get bigger. When I get further away, the pupils get smaller. The blink amount, let's go back to here. On video tracking, I'm going to click on enable hand detect. And I'm going to publish that preview. I'm going to hide the workspace inspector and go over to hand detect. So I made it that if I raise my left hand, not my right hand, it'll blink. So if, it's pretty cool because you can isolate hands to do different effects or different gestures. So 
moving around, make this person blink. I call this the angry eyeballs. And yeah, there's also another eyeball. Let's select layer two. Uh, and this one's a little bit more straightforward. So there's no blinking in this one. So once again, these will be included with this tutorial. So if you're watching this on YouTube, you're going to want to go over to the vidvox.net website and actually click on the tutorial link for the video tracking to get this and more project files. Another thing I want to show you with the Magic Leap is Gecko. So a good example, Gecko is an application that will detect these hand values and send them out through OSC commands. So right now it's detecting my up and down. Let's change this. So let's say we want this iris size to be affected by that. I'm just gonna detect that. I'm gonna minimize Gecko. Let's go back to here to main output. So this is another way in which you can use two types of hand data. Maybe eye position will make more sense. Let's detect this. All right, so now whenever I raise my hand, because I'm using the magic leap, it's raising the eyeballs. And whenever it sees my hand, it is blinking. If you're curious, I just made a ramp to change the values when it sees my hand. So it's just isolating this from 100 to zero to 100 to cause this blink motion. If you want to get up and running quick, you can load this project up. In the template options, we also have a new face and hand tracking example. Uh, and if you'll notice, it seems frozen, but that's because it was using my previous input. I'm just going to click on view source and I will do FaceTime camera. So in this example is showing me the face tracking again. There's a custom control surface, which is similar to the one that we used in the previous example. It's just outputting that data so that it's easier for us to visualize. Right hand, it's going to change some effects. This side scroller and flip. Left hand is going to enable the dot screen and increase the size. So let's change this over to that Elgato streaming camera. So this is a virtual camera on the iPad. Cool. Dot screen. Yeah, I hope that you enjoyed this video tutorial. I hope that you found it useful. I also can't raise my hands. And hopefully this will allow you to see all the different ways in which you can use the new video tracking plugin inside of EDMX. And if you're curious, check out the Gecko, which I'll put a link to in this tutorial for using a leap motion. And if you're curious, I'm using this Elgato camera hub. I think I had to have the pro version, but it's allowing me to stream over Wi-Fi from my iPad. And it's got some other fun features that uh, I never use. So maybe you will. All right. Thank you again. And uh, if you do anything really cool, tag us in it. And uh, we'd love to see what you're doing. Thanks. Bye.